Hi, welcome to Massage 101. I'm here today to teach you a few tips and techniques that you can apply to give a great massage. Now, I've been doing massage for 14 years professionally and I love the way it makes the people around me feel. So if you want to be able to make your friends, loved ones, and family feel really great, then learn these techniques and start giving some massages. The world would be a better place if everyone was more relaxed. The first thing I usually do is introduce my hands to the body. So I will just kind of move in and I always lean and use my body weight instead of having it come directly from the strength of your hands you can just lean your body into their body which will help you give a much longer lasting massage. So I'm just kind of using the heels of my hand to go in and work the side of his spine. You always want to stay off the bones so never apply pressure directly to the spine which is right in the middle of the back. I'm just going into the muscles on the side of his spine. Now the pressure that I'm using here is relatively light. It's just to kind of warm up the muscles and get them used to your touch. It's like saying hello to the body. I use a little bit of rocking too because that just helps to loosen everything up even more. The whole reason we do massage is to loosen the body. I can also start to tell where his tension is. As I'm leaning into his body with my palms, I can feel the places that feel a little tighter. Usually people carry a lot of tension in their shoulder area. And the other thing that happens that's pretty interesting is most people will start to get a little red wherever their muscle tension is. So you can see his back is starting to get red here. These are like little clues that there's some tight muscles under there. So that's what I'll focus on when I move into some forearm pressure. So at this point, I'm going to get a little bit of oil. I use a plant-based, organic, natural oil. I rub it into my hands a little bit so it would be nice and warm when I put it on the body. And then just use some long, smooth strokes to spread the oil out. And after you feel like you've got a good coating on there, get just a little bit more. Once you feel like you've got some good coverage, you can start to incorporate your forearms. Now, this is a technique that they use in Hawaii. It's called Lomi Lomi Massage. And you just use like the fatty, meaty parts of your forearms to apply pressure to the muscles. <clears throat> when you're doing massage, you always want to focus on your body mechanics, and if you get a little bit lower and lean into it more, <clears throat> then you'll definitely have the energy to do a full hour as opposed to five minutes. The biggest complaint I get when teaching couples how to do massage is mostly the ladies are like, my husband only gives me a massage for like five minutes and it's squeeze, squeeze, squeeze and done. So this is really a great way to be able to have stamina when you're doing massages. How does that feel? Awesome. And while you're giving massage, you always want to ask for feedback because that's the most important thing. You have to think, 
I'm here for this person's benefit. So it doesn't matter if you think it feels good or it looks good to you. The bottom line is what is the person receiving? So you want to be sure and ask for feedback so you can get clear. If he were to say, I want more pressure, then I could adjust. If he were to say, I want less pressure, then I can adjust. So I'm really putting his body first and listening to what he's saying. So here I'm starting to go in after that nice broad forearm pressure, warm things up. I'm starting to go in and on the side of the spine, there's a group of muscles called the erector spinae and they lay on both sides of the spine. <clears throat> you can see where they are because it's kind of a bump right here on the back on both sides. And that is a great muscle that's always doing a ton of work keeping the body upright. So you can use your thumbs to just go in a little bit deeper and really work those muscles. So whatever I do to one side, I always want to try to remember to do to the other side. That way you keep it nice and even. Otherwise, the person will feel lopsided when you're done. So I'm just going back to this forearm pressure, this lomi lomi stroke. And I'm really just pressing and ironing out this erector spinae group. Now I'm going to come in and work those muscles with my thumbs. Now in Massage 101, we always want to remember not to go too deep. This is more of a relaxation massage than a therapeutic deep tissue. You want to really be comfortable with the body and take a look at a lot of anatomy pictures. Look at the skeletal system, look at the muscular system before you ever try to start doing deep tissue because you can actually hurt a person if you put too much pressure in the wrong place. If you want to use a little more pressure, you can go in with the flats of your fingers. And use some of your knuckles too, just a little bit, not much. And then I like to wrap around the shoulders, scoop this flesh, this is actually called the trapezius, and just work this out with my thumbs a little bit. The important thing for beginners is not to overuse your thumbs. A lot of people, even professional massage therapists, end their career early by blowing their thumbs out. And then it really, it's just they, their thumbs don't work anymore. So be careful with that. You want to use your thumbs a little bit in the places that are smaller and you can't use that broad forearm pressure but also be careful of pinching here because a lot of people carry a lot of tension in their upper shoulder area in this trapezius muscle but if you just go in and squeeze it like as hard as you can that doesn't always feel good so it's very important to just kind of work the muscle and warm up the tissue and I can tell Jason's got a little bit of a knot up in here because it feels sort of crunchy when I go over it.
and what I did to this side, I'm going to repeat on the other side. So I just work on over to the other shoulder and do the same thing. I'm using the flats of my fingers underneath the trapezius and the thumb on the top of it to kind of massage both sides of it. And this really helps to open up the muscle. The other thing to be aware of when you're working this area is there's a bone called the scapula that you want to pretty much avoid. So the muscles are all around the bone, but I'm going to show you where it is because if I go like this, it makes this whole scapula pop up. So this bone right here, it's shaped sort of triangularly, this is the scapula. That is not, you don't want to apply pressure directly to this bone. You want to stay just on the inside of it because that's where a lot of muscular attachments are. So just staying on the side, it's called the vertebral border of the scapula. It's a good juicy spot where you get a lot of, a lot of tension. But if you stay between that vertebral border and the spine, it feels great. All you need to do is wiggle the shoulder a little bit. Once that muscle pop, or once that bone pops up, just don't put any pressure on it. Stay on the sides of it. I'll show you how to treat that muscle in Massage 201. Okay, now that I've worked most of his back, I'm just going to go in here and give his neck some nice squeezes. And do some more of those palm strokes. And now, I'll step out and get something special for the treatment and I'll be right back. So one of the things that I love to do is work um, hydrotherapy into my massage session. I actually have a towel caddy, I don't know if you want to go that far, but I keep a lot of steaming towels just waiting for a moment like this. And I just take them out and I'll put them right on the body over the area that I've worked and I use that palm pressure again to just press the heat, the warm heat into the person's body. Ladies, if you've ever gone to get a pedicure, you know how this feels when they pull those towels out and wrap your feet in them and then work them a little bit. It's like heaven. How did that feel? <laughs> okay. So now I'm going to finish up by just doing the calves and the feet. I think that for a Massage 101 class, the back and the calves are what we'll start with. So there'll be more lessons to come, but for this particular one, I just want to focus on the back because that's where the majority of the issues are and the shoulder area, and then the calves and the feet because it always feels so heavenly to have those rubbed. So at this point, I'm just going to basically give the calf a few squeezes to introduce myself to the muscles. It's just like saying, hello. So I just give the calf some nice squeezes. You can always feel like where it feels tense in there too. And uh, then I'll take a little bit of oil and I'll spread it out over the meaty part of the calf. And actually the whole thing because we're going to work it all. But one important thing to remember is never ever put pressure behind the kneecaps. The problem is this area is unprotected and there are a lot of things that are running through the back of the knee that just do not need pressure. So never put pressure 
on the back of the kneecaps. You always want to stay down here or above, of course. So I just use my palms to kind of come on, on come in on both sides of the calf muscle and start warming it up. And I'm squeezing in with a little bit of pressure, but I'm still using my body weight and leaning into the muscle. And then the next thing I usually do is this is called petrissage. I go in and I'm just kind of wringing the calf with my hands. Maybe some of you were tortured when you were younger and got an Indian rug burn. That's what they used to call them when I was a kid. Well, it's kind of like the same motion, but with oil and less pressure, it actually feels kind of delightful. And continuing with the calf, Continue to work the muscle, squeeze it gently, use your hands to kind of knead the muscle. It's as if you're making a loaf of bread. You want to just take it and knead it until it's all nice and warm. Then it'll be ready for baking. I use my knuckles just a little bit. This is actually not so much my knuckles as it is the flats of my finger. So if you curve your fingers like this and make a little flat surface right here, that's a great place to put some pressure, but not too much. Remember, we're here for relaxation purposes. So that's pretty much the calf sequence, and once you've done that, their calf will be feeling pretty loose. If you have any runners or bikers that you know, they will love this. This will be the most exceptional part of the massage for them, probably. So now that I'm done doing basically the exact same thing to this calf as I did to this one, I'm going to move right down into the foot. Now the foot is a very special place because it has tons of nerve endings down here. So this is actually a real pleasure center for most people. If you've ever had a pedicure, you probably get it because having all that attention on your feet for like 20 to 30 minutes is really heavenly. I just spread the oil out over the foot it's also really good for people who have dry feet. And then I usually come down and just squat. It's always thinking about body mechanics. I don't wanna wear myself out because I wanna be able to do a massage and have plenty of energy for the day. So with this flat part of my finger again, I just kind of come down and apply a little bit of pressure to both sides of the foot. And then I take my thumbs and I just kind of do little crisscrosses in the foot. Swish, swish, swish. That's what it would sound like. Swish, swish, swish. And I have my, have my the flats of my fingers on the other side so that I can kind of push it out and actually stretch the foot while I'm applying all this different thumb pressure. And then I come down here to the ball of the foot and really just kind of go in a little deeper with my thumbs. You can feel all kinds of good stuff in here. You can feel the bones and the tendons. Sometimes it's a little bit crunchy. And after I get 
the surface of the foot all nice and worked out, I move into the toes. I think it's really important to get these little spots between the toes, just so you feel like you've had every inch of you touched. So I come down here and just squeeze the toes. And I actually put a little bit of pressure making sure I'm contacting the little area in between each toe also. And then you take the toes and you can just put your fingers on both sides of them and give them a little squeeze and tug. Not too much of a tug, but just a little bit. And then I'm just kind of going in and pushing in. So I'm just working the ball of the foot now again because you can't get too much of that especially in here this is a great great spot and actually in Chinese acupuncture there's a spot right here underneath the ball of the foot sort of in the big toe area where you can go in it's called a sedation point you can go in and put a little pressure and it's funny like when I do massages on people and they're talking too much, I'll come down here and hold this point and usually they'll start to snore after a few minutes. So this is a really good point to use if you need to just make someone relax really quickly. The sedation point. I'm sure that's not what it's called in Chinese acupuncture, but that's what we learned it as a massage school. Okay, so now that that's done and the Heel to toes have all been rubbed and given attention. I'm going to go and get the last special thing for his treatment. So once again, I have one of my favorite little secret weapons for massage, and that is my steaming hot towels. I love to take these hot towels and just slide them over the foot, make the foot nice and cozy, just give it a little tuck there. I'll do it on this one too, nice and cozy. I remember the first time I ever had this done to me was by a massage therapist named Philip. He was actually from Georgia and he used to always do this. He had a real heavy southern accent and he'd be like, how do those feet feel? <laughs> and I'd always be like, great, because I'd be so sedated by the time he got to my feet. But that's where I stole this move from originally. I'm sure he got it from someone else. but. He used to go to the School of Healing Arts in San Diego. And that's a great place, too, if you want to get a cheap massage. I think they still do them for around $30. So that's it, the steaming towel treatment. And then I kind of use the towel to wipe off the excess oil. And it's also kind of refreshing, especially if it's hot. They'll be warm for a minute, but then it gets cool right after. So that concludes Massage 101, an introduction to massage. I hope you got some pearls of wisdom here today and stay tuned for 201.